The year is 2033. Humanity is already on the brink of extinction, but even worse, the arena ladder has been taken over by a new flavor of the month. This time it wasn't a legion of overtuned ret paladins, it was artificial intelligence that took over the world of Warcraft. As punishment, these machine learning overlords made every human play Shadowlands classic without any catch-up mechanics for alts. After years of hiding, some of us decided to fight back. I was able to lead a rebellion into the AI's data center, located in Austin, Texas of all places. Luckily, we were able to download some of the original code to study how our AI overlords were able to learn how to PvP. What we discovered was a series of instructions on how to trade defensive cooldowns perfectly. So with humanity nearing extinction, we built a time machine. Somehow. And as the leader of the human resistance, we're counting on you to learn how to trade defensive cooldowns just like AI. Humanity needs to take a final stand against the machines. Otherwise, we will have no choice but to play Shadowlands forever. The first thing we learned about AI is that they have a defensive cooldown hierarchy. At the top, there is the PvP trinket, which AI defines as the ultimate defensive. It branches off into four subclasses of other defensive CDs. The first are damage reductions, so things like bark skin. Then we have healing-based cooldowns, you know, health stones and whatnot. The third class of CDs are last resort. Ice block, bubble, life swap, you get it. Then finally, we have mobility cooldowns, which are the last class of defensives. This is the system that AI uses to plan every defensive cooldown trade in Arena, using specific triggers to know what and when to trade. Yes, sometimes they get one shot by RMP just like you and I, but they follow these rules to win most of their games. So what we're gonna do is go through all of these subclasses of defensives to discover how AI learned to use defensive cooldowns perfectly every single game. The first subclass of CDs include damage reduction abilities. These are your quintessential wall effects, like astral shift for shamans, anything that provides a flat percentage-based decrease in damage taken. The main rule AI uses here is to use damage reduction cooldowns high on HP, making sure to not waste them. Let's break this down even further. All right, part one, trade damage reduction cooldowns high. This makes sense, right? Because the higher HP you are when a damage reduction is pressed, the less likely you are to actually drop critically low on HP, which means no executes or touch of death. There is a rule AI uses to know how early a damage reduction trade is needed. Smaller damage reductions mean trading higher on HP since they provide less protection against lethal damage. This also means the reverse is true. But first, let's think of a low damage reduction cooldown. Ah, yes. Bark skin. It's only 20% damage reduction. That's why every rank 1 resto druid on Twitch would use bark skin instantly when getting stunned and while offenses were being used. There was no point in trying to greed out bark skin since there was such a high risk of just dying through the CD because the mitigation is so low. But then think of a cooldown like dispersion. Its damage reduction is much higher. That means you don't have to use it so high on HP. Instead, you can afford to press it later. Think of a player like Prev in the AWC tournaments. His team was the best at using defensives exactly when needed, so that meant Prev sometimes would dispersion low on HP, since his damage reduction was so high that he could afford to be greedy. Some cooldowns break this rule because of unique properties. Take Dark Pact, for instance. This creates a shield as a percentage of your current health, not maximum health. That means the longer you wait to use it, the less value it gives you. It's no wonder why every rank 1 warlock would press Dark Pact at 100% HP sometimes. There was almost no reason to ever greet it. Alright, so we have part 1, trade damage reduction cooldowns high. But what about the second part of the rule, do not waste them? Let's see what that means. By studying rank 1 players, AI learned to check for a few things before popping defenses. The first check was to see if the enemy team was popping CDs, and then it learned to check whether or not their healer was currently in CC. If both of these are true, the AI will calculate incoming damage and press damage reduction cooldowns high on HP. It's easy to understand why the enemy team popping cooldowns would trigger a damage reduction trade. By using damage reduction defensives, it flattens out the damage spikes that happen during burst windows. The damage increase from something like Avenging Wrath or Crusade can be scary to deal with. These cooldowns are designed to kill you fast, which is why Disc Priests were very strong at the end of Season 1, since they could just press Pain Suppression to slow down the flow of damage. But remember, AI also checks for crowd control on their healer too. Think about it, even if the enemy team is using major offensives, sometimes your healer can save you as long as they aren't in CC. 
In coordinated 3v3, rank 1 players would use communication to dictate defensive cooldown trades. If the healer wasn't in CC, sometimes they were the ones who pressed their damage mitigation cooldown to save their DPS from lethal burst damage. Solo Shuffle was a bit different though, and that's where AI learned that they need to rely more on checking add-ons like big debuffs or using weak auras to quickly notice when their healer was being put in a long CC chain. AI learned that in these moments, it's up to the DPS to press their damage mitigation cooldowns high to survive through any CC chain on their healer. By doing this, AI learned that it allowed their healer to save their PvP trinket for other situations later on in the round, and even better, it prevented unnecessary losses. These unique situations are how AI learned how and when to trade defensive cooldowns. But a second question needed to be answered. What to do once damage mitigation defensives were actually used? While AI studied rank 1 gameplay from Dragonflight Season 2, it noticed that once players are forced to use damage mitigation cooldowns, it usually gave them the ability to start counter-pressuring. AI learned that it was usually a mistake to pop defensives and then run away, because it allowed the enemy team to keep up their momentum. Instead, by using a damage mitigation at the right moment, it opened up a crucial moment to start pushing the enemy team back. With the increased bulk, it meant less risk of dying. Think of a Warlock's unending resolve. This not only provides damage reduction, but also interrupt and silence immunity. So should your immediate response be to pop your biggest damage reduction CD and run away? No! If you're a Warlock, you should use your shield wall not only to survive enemy damage, but also to push back and start counter-pressuring. That way you get more value out of your big investment. So, now we know how AI has learned to use damage reduction cooldowns. They trade high, but make sure not to be wasteful. But now, we need to move on to the second subclass of defensives, health increases. This type of cooldown includes things like health stone, commanding shout, or renewal. You know, anything that makes your health bar go up. Now the question is, how did AI learn to use these cooldowns? Well, for this they developed a second rule. Use HP increases low, but don't use them too late. This makes sense, right? The lower you are on HP, the more value you will get from an instant heal. Let's take an extreme example, Lay on Hands. In some cases, this is a 100% heal. So, what situation would give the Paladin the most value? Using it on someone at 60% HP or 20%? Of course, it will be 20% every time, and the lower we go on HP, the more value we get out of a cooldown like Lay on Hands. When we learned how AI traded damage reduction cooldowns, we saw that the main triggers were things like offensive cooldowns and whether or not your healer was in CC. For any healing based cooldown, the trigger is simple, your health bar. The lower your health bar gets, the more likely it is that a healing based cooldown will be necessary. AI learned that once their HP hit a very specific threshold, it was time to use an instant heal. Of course, there are some exceptions to this rule. Think of renewing Blaze for Evokers. This isn't an instant HP boost, but instead a rolling health increase, similar to a hot from Arresto Druid. These types of cooldowns are worth trading higher since the effect happens gradually. In fact, trading this cooldown low gives it diminished value since there is a higher risk of dying to lethal damage at low HP. The other consideration you need to make are whether there are any major healing reduction effects active. This is a bit more situational, but think about a debuff like Sharpened Blade. This is the strongest healing reduction effect in PvP. AI learned that it was often better to wait for this effect to fall before using a major heal. Of course, this isn't always possible, but definitely worth it when trying to min-max. Now that we cover the second subclass of defensive CDs, let's move on to the third type. These include any last resort defensive cooldowns. These are the ultimate defensive cooldowns. Think of things like Divine Shield, Ice Block, or Netherwalk. What do all these spells share in common? They will instantly stop damage no matter what. AI defined these as last resort for a reason, because generally speaking, they are the ultimate safeguard. Now, of course, AI knows that some of these defensives have counters. Divine Shield and Ice Block can be mass dispelled or shattered, and Tranquility for Resto Druids, that can sometimes be interrupted by Ring of Peace. AI knows this, of course, but let's ignore that for just a moment. The reason why last resort cooldowns are so effective is because they instantly deny damage. No matter how far behind you might be, some cooldowns will just deny a kill no matter what. Want to kill a Frost Mage? Well, you're going to have to deal with Alter Time and Greater Invisibility. But at some point, you will also need to anticipate Ice Block. Unless you have a counter ready, this ability will keep them alive no matter what. Because of this, AI developed a rule for last resort defensives. The rule was to trade a last resort cooldown if and only if you absolutely cannot survive incoming damage and you don't have time for other CDs to be effective. Let's look at Life Swap as an example. When AI studied Rank 1 Disc Priests, it made an interesting observation. In most games, Rank 1 Disc Priests would trade out Pain Suppression, Rapture, and sometimes even Barrier early on into the game, which are, for the most part, damage mitigation cooldowns. And it wasn't until all of these were unavailable that Disc Priests actually used Void Shift. In most games, it was the last resort cooldown, the thing Disc Priests pressed when nothing else was left. 
There was, of course, times when Rank 1 Disc Priest would trade out Life Swap early, maybe even before other cooldowns, but this was only during moments where someone had dropped critically low. If there wasn't enough time to save them, sometimes Priest had no choice but to Life Swap early. AI got so good at anticipating incoming damage that it learned to use Last Resort cooldowns as a way to immune the killing blow. Most of the time, this meant trading these cooldowns low on HP. Think of a Paladin pressing bubble when their HP suddenly drops to execute range. When nothing else was ready, Divine Shield was the answer. What AI observed was that sometimes Last Resort cooldowns need to be traded at much higher HP. You probably know how much damage one-shot specs can do. Take Devastation of Ochres as an example. AI learned that Last Resort cooldowns sometimes need to be traded to avoid lethal damage damage even at high HP, to avoid getting one shot from 60% from a Living Flame, Flame Breath, or Eternity Surge. This gave AI its rules for the third subclass of defensive CDs, which leaves mobility as the last type of defensive trade that we need to cover. What is a mobility cooldown? Well, for sure, it means things like Demonic Teleport, Shimmer, or even Shadow Step. Basically, anything that enhances the movement of your character or moves them around the map instantly. When used at the right time, these spells can instantly deny enemy damage, sort of like a damage reduction cooldown, but with the potential to completely avoid enemy attacks. Mobility cooldowns were difficult for AI to learn, since sometimes they were used offensively. Most games, rogues would just shadow step as a gap closer, using it as a tool to stay on target. In other cases, rogues would shadow step away from the fight, using the ability on their partners to duck behind a pillar for cover. AI noticed that some types of mobility cooldowns, like teleports for instance, were really good for dealing with melee. In fact, AI began to learn about the mobility wars between casters and melee DPS. If a melee used their mobility cooldown as a gap closer, it was common for rank 1 warlocks to teleport away, which created a new gap for the melee to deal with. In most cases, rank 1 players would use mobility cooldowns reactively, reacting to gap closers, enemy offensives, or noticing that their healer was put in CC before deciding to use mobility cooldown defensively. If a rank 1 warlock saw the enemy team pop damage CDs, teleport was a natural reaction. AI learned that mobility cooldowns can sometimes replace damage reduction CDs, all while being a much smaller investment. AI also learned that rank 1 players sometimes trade mobility cooldowns preemptively, as a way to avoid needing to use other major damage CDs. AI saw rank 1 Windwalker monks use their port the moment their healer got CC'd. This way, they preemptively could avoid any major damage before it happened. This brings us to the final rule AI learned. Use mobility cooldowns as a way to avoid pressing anything else. With these four rules, we had a complete picture of every subclass of defensive cooldowns. Only one thing remained, the PvP trinket, which again, AI viewed as the ultimate defensive. But why? Well, let's think about it for a second. The PvP medallion is like the ultimate key because it unlocks every single defensive door. Not every damage reduction, healing, last resort, or mobility cooldown can be used while in CC, which means our trinket is sometimes our only guarantee. Of course, there are exceptions. Disc priests can use pain suppression while stunned, but that still leaves barrier, rapture, and void shift, which can't be used in any form of CC. AI learned from watching Rank 1 Disc Priest that PvP trinkets were often combined with other major cooldowns. The medallion was an almost guaranteed save to use other defenses. This helped AI avoid one of the most common PvP mistakes, which is to perform an empty trinket. Empty trinketing means using your PvP medallion without anything else. Most of the time, Rank 1 players would use their trinket as a way to use another major defensive even mobility cooldowns like teleport. Sometimes players had no other options but to trinket, maybe to try and counter with CC or to just kite away, but these moments generally meant something else had gone wrong or there was nothing else left. This led AI to develop the fifth and final rule, avoid empty trinkets. Whenever possible, try and use the PvP medallion to access other life-saving cooldowns. With all five rules established, we now know how AI trades defensive cooldowns. The goal is to be efficient with damage reductions, heals, last resort abilities, and even mobility to survive as long as possible. And only one question remained, where did AI study rank one level gameplay? Who in their right mind would be so daring to create a platform capable of rapid improvement? <clears throat> it was skillcap.com, of course. For over 10 years, Skillcap has been helping players reach their rating goals. Stop wasting your time grinding thousands of games only to see no progress. With Skillcap, you'll uncover the secrets to climbing fast that only take a few minutes to learn and can be immediately applied in your next game. The best part is it's completely risk-free to try, as you're kept safe with our rating gain guarantee. If you don't significantly improve while actively using Skillcapped, then you get your money back, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Get the rank you've always wanted by clicking the link in the description below. Alright guys, that wraps up today's video. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below if you'd like a similar video for other concepts. As always though, we'd like to thank you all for watching. See you soon.